extreme weather and climate related changes has have contributed to what has already been a pretty bizarre year, don't you think? Um, there were fires, there were hurricanes, heat waves, disastrous winds all ravaged the U.S. over the course of 2020. The extreme weather has cost the country billions of dollars with a new administration on the horizon now. 2021 is sure to bring its fair share of climate news. Here to talk more about all of this is meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli. Uh, Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. The other day I was trying to actually think of some of the big headlines from around the world, not just this country, and so many of them sounded mm -hmm. positively biblical. We remember the locusts and the fires in Australia. But, you know, here at home, yeah. this country really <laughs> faced a lot. Um, among everything else going on in 2020, um, there were big climate events, wildfires, uh, the summer derecho, I learned a lot. I learned new phrases mm -hmm. as well. Uh, of course, hurricane season where we ran out of letters, had to go into the Greek alphabet. Why are we mm -hmm. seeing these weather events? And, and what does it mean you know, for the country's wallet? Because they're expensive. You know, it's interesting. We start to react when it does start to impact our wallet. Uh, and that's what we're seeing happen progressively over the past several years and, and this year especially. You know, we're going to break the record for the number of billion-dollar disasters, so disasters that cost the United States a billion dollars or more. The record is 16. We've, we've done that a couple of times. This year we're going to shatter it, probably 20, maybe even 21 billion-dollar disasters, including the unprecedented fire season in the West, uh, you mentioned hurricane season. We have 30 named storms. The most landfalling hurricanes that we've ever seen, the most landfalling tropical storms that we've ever seen in a season. And you asked why this is happening. Well, there's more energy in the system. As we heat the planet, uh, by the way, ocean temperatures have risen around 2 degrees Fahrenheit uh, since the late 1800s. Air temperatures have risen as well. And you add more energy to storms, and you also add more energy to evaporation. So not only do you get stronger hurricanes, but because you're evaporating moisture from the soil in the western United States, we have one of the worst droughts we've had in 1,200 years uh, in the western United States, believe it or not. And because of that, fires are getting worse and worse because you're drying out the soil. It's causing all kinds of complications. And the derecho event that you mentioned was the worst we've ever seen, at least in modern history. Close to $8 billion worth of damage. This was a disaster. Because of the crazy news cycle, it wasn't covered quite as much as it probably should have. But... Um, this was an extraordinary meteorological event. Winds in Iowa exceeded 100, even gusts to 140 miles an hour. Um, it destroyed so much agriculture. It was really a, a tremendous uh, disaster for the folks there in the Midwest, and it's made worse by climate change. You add more energy to any mm -hmm. one of these weather events, and you're going to make these situations worse, Amory. Yeah, and of course, when you talk about climate change, it's you know it's uh, it's still debated but widely accepted that we play a role. A lot of it has to do with our own energy consumption. And so divestment was big this year. Uh, $14.5 trillion has been allocated for divestment from fossil fuels over the next several mm -hmm. years. Plus, uh, renewable energy has officially become the cheapest form of energy in history. Where do we see these trends going as we head into 2021? We're at a turning point. There's no doubt about it. I think the divestment movement seemed like pie in the sky, activism, craziness, you know, five or 10 years ago. Started in 2011, really got steam in 2014. $14.5 trillion has been allocated to divestment. Uh, the New York State Pension Fund just divested over $200 billion a few weeks ago. Ireland divested. New York City is divesting. Los Angeles divesting. London divesting. And it's not just because it's bad for the climate, fossil fuels. It's because it turns out it's bad for people's investments. Exxon just wrote down $20 billion worth of its value uh, about a month or two ago. So we're seeing that happen. And not only that, renewable energy has turned out to be a tremendous opportunity for the United States. The fastest growing job occupations in the U.S. Number one is wind. Number three is solar. That's from the federal government for the next 10 years. So this is not pie in the sky. This transformation is happening right now. You know, turns out climate change is, is a huge challenge, but it's also a tremendous this opportunity to rebuild communities that have been affected by, you know, manufacturing being shipped overseas, creating jobs for families across the United States. You know, Joe Biden mentioned this, and, and I think maybe a lot of folks didn't see the connection, but he said, when I think climate, I think jobs. 
it turns out that this is already another industrial revolution that's happening. It's a green industrial revolution, but it is a true industrial revolution that's happening across the country. So, you know, it's going to cost us so much more money, Anne Marie, if we try to tackle this, you know, 30, 40 years in the future. We should tackle it now, and I'll equate it to getting your cavity drilled. No one likes to get their cavity drilled, right? But you might as well do it. It'll cost you a couple hundred dollars right now. It'll cost you a few thousand dollars if we wait. The point is, we can't afford not to tackle climate change today. And not only that, we lean into this challenge, just like personal challenges, and it turns out to be the greatest opportunities for a cleaner atmosphere, a cleaner world, and a world where we have better jobs, too. So it's a win-win-win. Right, Jeff. Hey, getting a cavity filled is a lot better than a root canal. Um, so I like that metaphor. Um, thank right you so now, much. So I, I know, know that as we head into 20, <laughs> as we head into 2021, particularly with the Biden administration having a focus on climate change, we're going to be talking an awful lot more to you on the topic. Thank you so much. You're welcome.